Scientists have carried out survey after survey to monitor the impact of the nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Their studies on land around the damaged facility give a relatively clear picture of the contaminated areas. But tracking radioactive fallout in the ocean is much more complicated. NHK has been given exclusive access to the latest research effort. First, here's a snapshot of where things stand at sea. The Fukushima Daiichi plant is located on the Pacific coast. After the meltdown, many scientists estimated that most of the fallout ended up in the ocean. But now, radiation levels in seawater near the plant are found to be low. It's thought that the radioactive particles in the water have dispersed. In fact, in areas over one kilometer from the plant, radioactivity is almost undetectable. The Japanese government is lifting entry bans in waters off Fukushima. The off-limits zone was reduced in August last year. And this April, the zone was reduced to 5 kilometers by 5 kilometers off the plant. But people are still concerned. Local marine life is still showing high concentrations of radioactive materials. In August, a fish showing radioactivity 250 times above the government safety limit was caught near the seafloor. The percentage of marine samples exceeding the limit remains above 10% of the total caught off Fukushima. Fishing in waters off the prefecture is still restricted. Japanese and American scientists have started a broad survey of those waters. They want to understand the extent of the contamination and what it means over the long term. They let NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa join them on their first field excursion. In mid-May, 36 researchers from Japan and the U.S. embarked on a 10-day survey of the Fukushima coast. Their goal was to find out why fish retain high levels of radiation? It's a very mysterious thing. The uh, radioactivity level in um, marine organisms sh should be much lower. The group started work at a point 40 kilometers from the nuclear plant. It then went to 20 kilometers and to the edge of the off-limit zone. We're just a five kilometer from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. You can see the plant there in the distance. This is the first time researchers outside of Japan have come close to the facility by sea since the March 2011 accident. The researchers took samples of water mud from the sea bottom, plankton, and other marine organisms at 15 points around the area. This device consists of 24 cylinders. Scientists sank it into the ocean and remotely controlled each cylinder individually in order to collect water samples at different depths. The utility company responsible for Fukushima Daiichi says no new radioactive materials are entering the ocean from the crippled plant. The scientists say if that is the case, fish must be accumulating radioactivity through the food chain. To test this, the researchers collect marine life living on and in the seafloor. They also gather plankton from different depths. We want to study possible routes of contamination by checking organisms near the seafloor and also the fish that eat them. The scientists use a device known as a multiple core to gather mud samples from the sea bottom. They cut the samples into one centimeter slices to analyze radiation levels in each layer. The next step will be to study the connection between these data from different samples and different locations. Examining sample after sample, the scientists will map the contamination and try to determine how it spreads. There is another dimension to the study. 
One researcher from the U.S. is looking for traces of an element called radium. It's a radioactive isotope that would mark the presence of groundwater. Hundreds of tons of groundwater are seeping into the nuclear plant every day. We want to use the radium isotope in the coastal sea to quantify how much groundwater is coming into the ocean. And we think groundwater is a potential source of uh, contamination from the, the Fukushima site. The group worked day and night gathering the samples. They view this as a rare opportunity to find out the mechanism of radioactive contamination in the ocean and contribute to the environmental safety to the region. They collected every sample possible during the mission. This accident was quite a, quite a unique accident in the past history of radioactive pollution in the ocean. We do not have much experience in the past, so uh, we need to uh, collect data and uh, preserve it for future. There are questions that we need to be involved in as Americans on our side of the Pacific looking across to what's happening on this side. So it becomes international very quickly. I think every ocean question almost by its nature is international because the waters move across boundaries. They don't care whose water they are. So I think uh, we need to be involved. The results of the survey are expected by the end of the year. The scientists say this is only the beginning. They say their work must continue for years to come so people around the world can understand the true impact of one of the world's worst nuclear accidents. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World of Fukushima, Japan. The UN's nuclear watchdog says there are still too many uncertainties surrounding plans to decommission the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The International Atomic Energy Agency says the plant's operator and the Japanese government must clearly explain how they intend to handle the crisis. IE inspectors visited the Fukushima plant last month. They interviewed officials from the government and the Tokyo Electric Power Company. In a report, the IEA team identified 17 areas that need improvement. They include technical and financial uncertainties in TEPCO's plan to scrap the reactors and restore the site. The inspectors say more public explanations are needed of the various technical options and potential effects on surrounding areas. They also say more discussions are needed on how to dispose of radioactive waste. They say a lack of such a process could hamper decommissioning. The IA team says TEPCO has been slow in responding to the plant's troubles. It suggests dividing problem-solving staff from day-to-day -day operations. Government and TEPCO officials plan to use the report when they review the decommissioning time frame next month. An NHK survey shows work is finished in less than 5% of the area near the Fukushima Daiichi plant designated for cleanup. Even after that work is done, radiation levels in many places have not fallen to the government standard. The town of Hirono is 30 kilometers south of the plant. Workers have almost finished decontaminating residential areas. The government's safe limit for radiation is 0 0.23 microsieverts per hour. It's 0 0.39. The radiation level is not falling. Residents are calling on authorities to decontaminate these areas once again. The radiation must drop to a level that we feel safe to live with. Otherwise, we can never rebuild this area. The workers wash down roads and roofs and scrape off the surface soil and gardens. But town officials and experts say it's difficult to remove radioactive substances from the tiny gaps in asphalt. It's hard physical labor and takes a lot of time. Heavy snow hampers the work in winter. Sometimes the homeowners have evacuated and officials can't contact them. It's also difficult to find a place to temporarily store the contaminated soil. One expert suggests it's time to review the cleanup plan. Radiation levels over the long term are expected to drop below the standard only in some of the areas. 
In the high-level areas, officials should allow the residents the option of moving out. Officials in the central government say they will re-examine the decontamination plan later this year. The meltdowns and explosions at the facility forced tens of thousands of residents to flee their homes. But more people now have a partial access to their former community. The government has revised the last no-entry zone boundaries around Futaba. The town is one of the municipalities in which Fukushima Daiichi is located. Government planners have reorganized it into two zones based on radiation levels. Part of the town where 96% of residents lived will remain barricaded. But for the first time since the disaster, people can now enter a small area along the coast. Overnight stays, however, will be prohibited. We've finally taken our first step towards reconstruction. Mayor Izawa says Cruz will proceed with decontamination work. He says he'll consult the central government about rebuilding areas ravaged by tsunami. Spring has been slow in coming to Japan this year, but a sure sign that summer is around the bend has finally arrived. Farmers near Tokyo are preparing to ship their first watermelons of the season, and judging from early reports, it promises to be a sweet year. About a hundred farmers gathered in Yachimata City to discuss how to classify this year's watermelons. They grade the fruit according to size, shape and condition. To get an expert opinion, the farmers brought some of the freshly picked fruit to children at a nearby kindergarten. They say the low temperatures this spring and late frost has left the fruit relatively small, but with a high sugar content. <laughs> The farmers will ship watermelons to Tokyo and other areas until the end of July. Researchers in northeastern Japan have begun studying the long-term health effects of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. They say the data could spur the development of new treatments for disaster victims. Researchers from Tohoku University and Iwate Medical University will survey 150,000 residents of coastal communities in northeastern Japan. They'll use questionnaires and genetic samples to identify diseases and stress-related disorders. Project leader Masayuki Yamamoto says the findings could be important well beyond the communities he's studying. I hope the results of this survey will be used worldwide to improve post-disaster medical treatment. Yamamoto says he hopes the project will attract medical professionals and help rebuild the region's medical institutions. Four Japanese nuclear plant operators say they're preparing to apply to restart reactors. They're hoping to fulfill new safety guidelines that will come into effect in July. Officials at Kansai Electric Power Company and Kyushu Electric Power Company say they plan to ask to resume two reactors each. Shikoku Electric Power Company executives are planning to apply to restart one reactor. Hokkaido Electric Power Company officials say they hope to bring three back online. We hope to restart reactors as soon as their safety is confirmed. Operators will be required to introduce tougher measures against accidents and natural disasters. They'll have to study the potential height of tsunami and the possibility of a volcanic eruption. And they'll have to present safety measures to deal with the risks. Officials from the Nuclear Regulation Authority will study the applications and decide whether to allow the reactors to restart. The new regulations will come into effect by July 18th. All but two of Japan's nuclear reactors are offline following the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant.